Hi, Aiko. Hi, Aisha. <laughs> Good to see you. Good to see you. Yeah. Ah, oh, so it's a beautiful uh, day in Seattle. I'm guessing it's a good day in California. It's such a good day because it's 88 degrees instead of 99 degrees. Yeah, yeah, that's good. I'm going to leave you to be able to keep your window open, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, good. Uh, that's a pretty uh, 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 shirt. like it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so um yeah you know we were talking offline uh, at another moment um about um what we might talk about next and i recall you telling the story here of um uh, you were making your latest um uh, music video which are available at another youtube channel mm -hmm. and um and uh kind of how that led you to thinking about attention span and all of that. Do you want to tell our audience a little bit about yeah. that? I, I don't know, like, I'm going to tell, you know, the story, but it's like at the same time, I feel like if I tell this story, I feel like I'm kind of complaining. But anyway, th this kind of leads to the topic I want to talk about. So, um, you know, I make these music videos they're very simple you know not so much video it's more like slideshow right but because my main thing is to put out music not the video but uh you have to have some image on the youtube to post it anyway so um my latest one uh i've been doing a lot of cover songs and sometimes here and there i put my original but this was a cover of a beautiful, gorgeous um, instrumental tune called Late Green by this composer, jazz guitarist. Um, I don't know if he calls himself jazz guitarist, but he is. Um, his name is Ben Monder, M-O-N-D-E-R. And uh, I've been kind of collaborating with my friend, um, Todd, he's a guitarist, and I said, hey, you know, do you have any music you want to work on with me? Because I'm open to it. And he said, well, maybe we can do this song. So he sent it to me. And I, I was just like, wow, what a, you know, amazing, gorgeous, beautiful tune. So I said, yeah, let's do it. And um, it took a while because this was like, uh, no words, no lyrics, right? It's just instrumental. And, uh, you know, with jazz, there's kind of a open middle section, you know, impro improvisational section. We can do anything with it. And uh, so, and I was not familiar with the song. Um, so it took a while to put it all together which was really fun, fun for me. Um, but I had to have like a different mindset to work on this because I wasn't used to working on music like this. And, you know, it took good two months or so, maybe even more, I can't remember. But um, um, when it was done, I was really excited. And Todd and I both really felt like it was complete and great. And I usually, anything that I post, I put it up on Facebook. And um, mm -hmm. oftentimes, I don't get like a huge reaction from people, response, um, but I get some, right? And this time, after 48 hours, only two people gave me thumbs up. Mm -hmm. And even though I'm kind of used to something, you know, similar of a reaction from people, this was like, what? Like, you know, I have three, over 300 friends. Right, right, so right, right, right. Two people. And, you know, I get usually comments too, but nothing. And I think that disappointment came from the fact that, one, I felt like this music was so 
beautiful. Not not like just what we did, but that original composition. Yeah, yeah. Stuff. And quality, like right. beautiful quality stuff. And two, we worked really hard to put it together. And so I didn't have an expectation, you know, right. that right. I, that people would share similar enthusiasm as I did. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That that didn't happen, and that really disappointed in me. And I sent a link of the YouTube video to the the original composer, and I got uh, a nice feedback from him. And I was really happy about that, but um, that led me to listen to his interview. Somebody interviewed him. I mean, there are, I think, a bunch of interviews that were done right, right. You know, with him because he's a very highly well-known musician in, in that world of you know jazz and guitar and things like that. And I really enjoyed listening to this. Like, I think it was like an hour and a half interview uh, with him. He's got this very calm, slow um, way of, you know, speaking, like slow meaning like careful, mm-hmm. you know, he's not like blah, 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 blah. And that really intrigued me and then it made me want to listen, you know, look to the whole thing because Everything he said had weight on it, you know. It wasn't just filled with words. And interestingly, within you know, within that interview, he talked about when the interviewer asked him, "What you know? What are some of the things that you um, suggest to these up and coming musicians, young, you know, y- young musicians?" Yeah, 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 yeah. He said, "Well." I, you know, I. He said something about how he. What he recommend is deep listening, and I'm like, oh, deep listening. You know, that's what we talk about. And and then he said, you know, these days he feels that it's unfortunate that musicians would have to just post a 10 second of a sample clip because people don't have the patience to listen to the whole song. Mm-hmm. I mean, if the, the music started out with like a long, sparse intro, people are just going to lose interest. And that's why, you know, more and more commercial music, they just want to grab people's attention quickly so they make the music that way, right? And uh, it's very rare when uh, music is presented not in that way Mm -hmm. so he said his recommendation was that just carve out the time each day to sit and being able to listen to the whole record Mm. and he mentioned this thing about how we know we used to i think he's my age late 50s probably i'm assuming but we are of the generation of listening to records Mm-hmm. In the past. So, you know, you put the record on the record player and then you listen to the first half, then you turn it around and listen to the other. You know, I mean, just by talking about it, it makes me feel like I'm talking about tea ceremony or something. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just, you know, he's saying, he, you know, he says, I'm not saying that you can do other things, but just you know practicing cultivating that time giving yourself that time to just sit and then listen to it deeply and i'm like yes yes and um and i just felt like wow this is something i can talk to aisha about on our podcast next Mm -hmm. time but i felt like that's what happens right like i post something on facebook that is a lot more, um, it it, it uh, asks for a lot more attention because this music is not like a 
fast moving music with lyrics and catchy thing. Right. But it's it's a very explorative, um, beautiful composition that's slow and you know, there's a lot of depth in it. And as I was feeling kind of disappointed that I, you know, didn't get much reaction from people, I just realized it's true. I mean, I myself do that too. Like, I go on YouTube to check out somebody's music, and then I notice myself not having enough attention span to listen to the whole thing. I mean, it depends on whether I like the music or not. Mm -hmm. Um but let's say if I was on Facebook and somebody posted some music, you know, would I have the patience to click that and then choose to just sit there and then give myself time to listen, you know? Mm -hmm. not, not that I'm saying, like, people on my, you know, my friends on Facebook should do that. I mean, that's totally their choice, right? But um, I ended up asking myself many questions like that. And then I realized, yeah, it's, you know, so true. We have these, like, we lost the ability to, or not even the ability, like, we lost our patience and desire and, and you know, all that, those things to give time to something. Yeah. Even, like, how we feel, you right. know, our bodily sensations, how we're feeling emotionally. Like, we don't, you know, we just want to avoid anything uncomfortable. Yeah. So we just don't do that, right? Yeah. And same thing with maybe listening to others or being with what's going on. Like, can we just settle into that and, you know, having this deep connection with something? Yeah. Um, so that's, you know, that's kind of, I mean, I didn't go into details like this with you, but those are like things that, you know, came to me and I just said, maybe this is something that we can explore. Yeah. Today. yeah. And, you know, we're talking about the, you know, why and what situations and then, you know, but I was saying how 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 can we bring ourselves back to this place uh, of presence? But but as you were talking, I had this thought that it's almost like do we even know what we've lost? Did we ever have it? Do we remember it? Some of us do. Some of us have a longing for it. And so we keep searching for that moment, coming back here. You know, childhood promises that. A childhood had that. Some people had that in their childhoods. Uh, it requires a rested limbic system, mm -hmm. right? It requires a, a deep breath and a relaxation and a quietness and a receptivity all but lost to many of us do we even know that's what we want do we even go there you know i mean people talk about meditation but you know like you know i've been doing some practices in different contexts in and out but like what can you notice in this moment can i notice you can i notice me can i notice around you um, you know, can I feel inside where you are? Can I feel inside where I am? Can I let the thoughts go? Because their thoughts are always going to be there, I believe, but they're not, you don't have to follow them. They're just there. And so can you let them go? So you're kind of doing this dance of what do you notice? Mm -hmm. And do you have to respond like, what is the proper response to someone's words? You know, like you were talking for a bit and um, in, you know, I could have interjected uh, uh, or I could have asked the question and it kind of stopped where, but to let the flow of your uh, experience, you know, just kind of go forward. And 
at some point I did choose to, you I mean, you kind of saw, you kind of stopped what you were saying. To, to, uh, you created a pause, a natural pause, I think. And, and I sort of interjected, but, but what is that? When, how do you do that? Like, you know, they say, you know, you'll see a lot of quotes about listening. We don't truly listen. We're always listening to respond. We're not listening to, to be reactively listening. We're not listening. Like, what does this moment require? What is this moment? And what will arise in me naturally in this moment? You know, we're always kind of uh, listening to have a response ready or, exactly, or, or yeah. a question ready or to show that we're paying attention. Like there's this intent, like this work efforting going on. It's not a receptivity and a dance of of nature, you know, like a nature's call and response. Because I don't imagine nature is so deliberate, right? Like, so you take a, two trees talking to each other or two birds talking to each other. I don't imagine... My imagination tells me that they're not deliberate. They're not intentional in the way that human beings are. They're not strategic and calculating. They just call and respond uh, from inside themselves and in connection to the greater whole. And we are we're lost in this sort of thing, you know, where we have to be on the ready to respond, to say something. And I just think, you know, how to return home to that spot, the space, that environment, and bring others along in that. Wouldn't that be beautiful? Mm -hmm. First yeah. find our own ground in there and then invite others, you know, what beauty there is there, what poetry there is there, you know? Yeah, I love that. That's so beautiful. You know, as you were telling me what you're telling me I felt like you know I think we talked about this in the past but when you were listened to you know there's a, a big satisfaction right because often we feel like we're, we're not listened to and we definitely talked about this but um like my posting the music on Facebook, you know, my YouTube link, the Facebook page is almost like a cry for being listened to. Yeah. And when I get no response, it's like, oh, nobody's listening to me. You know, I, I think there's that deeper sadness. Um, I, I didn't think about that quite when I was telling you about that the yeah, story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there is a, um, yeah, there's a beauty there. Like, you know, I wonder, nature is sad if we don't listen to them. Yeah. And I wonder if music is sad if yeah. it was not listened to, you know? And I don't know, I just, I feel like, I I feel like they would be sad, you know, if they were not listened to. And that, that means, I think they're sad if we're not present with them, right? Yeah, that's what I would ask, like, what does that mean to listen then, right? Yeah. And, and I, what you just said is like, the presence piece, but I will want to go back a step and say, you said it reminded you, uh, because you were talking, it reminded you of a Japanese tea ceremony. And I know I remember you doing that one time, teaching the kids that. Oh yeah, we did that for the yeah. homeschool thing too, yeah. Yeah, but, but I, I wonder like, what is the quality there? Is it, what is the intent there? What is the heart in those ceremonies? Is it yeah. to bring us to presence? Is oh it, yeah. 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 So so what do you know from that experience? I just, you know, well, first of all, I just love tea ceremony because of that, because it it brings you back to the present moment because there's no talking going on. Yeah. So you sit 
and there's the server and the receiver, right? Right. And because like there's no talking, you're starting to notice everything, like the sound of the tea kettle, you know, making this, you know, sound. It's a iron kettle, so it it uh makes this like a slight hiss, uh -huh. and you hear the bubbling of the water, and then and the water gets you know put in this thing. You use this bamboo wood or wooden ladle to you know pour this water from really high place into a tea ceremony cup which is like a bowl and then just that sound of hitting the water hitting the bowl you know you use the bamboo whisk to mix the powdered green tea you know all all that just the sensual the sounds and the smell and the visual, and you are just like right there. You won't be even thinking about, I got to go home and cook dinner or anything like that, right? And naturally, you were drawn into this present moment. And I, I love that. But we don't have a lot of opportunities you know for things like that anymore yeah but you know as you're saying that i mean that's exactly the, the quality like how how are two human beings together in relationship how can we treat this as a, a tea ceremony you know or, right. or a ceremony yeah like when i'm call listening it a to precious you, ceremony yeah yeah when i'm listening to you what would it be like to just really pay attention to the voice, you know, the sound yeah. of the voice, yeah. the timbre of your voice, yeah. you know, your facial expressions, which I think we tend to do, you know, being with that facial expressions, noticing and all that, but even deeper, right? Yeah. 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 So this is uh, deeper and deeper, right? Yeah. And yeah, like, we can use this for anything while we're talking to people, while we're listening to music, when we're in nature, when we're cooking. It's just like treated as tea ceremony. Yeah. And that's what meditating while you're actually living in your daily life, right? Like a lot of us try to meditate. 30 minutes, then in the rest of the the day is not mm -hmm. any, you know, meditation involved. Whereas maybe, maybe we can skip the meditation, but we can live while, you know, we're doing dishes. Can that be a tea ceremony? Yeah. Yeah. There's one uh, video channel that's just coming to my mind. That's really, uh, you've probably seen it because it's quite a number of followers on their millions, like, you know, over 11 million or it's, it's a Chinese, young Chinese woman mm -hmm. out in uh, rural, looks like a rural Chinese. Oh, right, right, right. And she's gardening and cooking yeah. and there's hardly any talking to it. It's right. just so beautiful visually. Yeah. The, the quality of it it's like right. walking and the this you see the beautiful plants and she's harvesting and she gathers and then she cooks and there's and then she lays it out and then she feeds her mother or grandmother whoever that is or i don't know neighbor i'm making up a story i don't know but it's so simple and so beautiful and so precious you know yeah. and, it's like that quality to live your exactly. life. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Do you know what I'm talking about? That channel. Oh, exactly. Yeah, I've I've watched a bunch of those <laughs> over the. I wonder if there are people out there who don't care for that. Like, what's this? And then they just can't watch it. Yeah, I'm sure there are, but then there's certain followers, right? So there yeah. is people. Right. But it goes go back to. Do we even know what we've lost? And do we even know that we want this? Because we don't even know that. I mean, you talk about this tea ceremony. I am finally in my life where maybe I could sit and and, and go deeper. I mean, in the last few years, 
But up until, I don't know, I mean, I've been so lost to my it's process, so it's not like an absolute, but it's like so lost to, say, f- like the feeling of stillness and safety in my body that I could just be here and and not let this this run my show, my thoughts be in control of me, that I could just settle and say, I don't even have to think, you know, like, like I can think, but I don't have to be on the ready to with dumb thoughts. Maybe there's something I can, maybe thoughts will come to me, arise when they need to arise. I don't have to be prepared with a thought, you know, mm-hmm. I'm still relatively quick thinking, you know, in that, like I, you know, I can hold up, you know, go back and forth, but I definitely slowed down mm-hmm. and, I can allow myself not to feel like, okay, if there's an awkward pause, okay, if I have nothing to say, I can live with all of that. I want to just practice uh, really listening. Right. Yeah. That's more important. Mm -hmm. What what will I find? What will I find at the other end of not having proper response? What, what will happen if I just listen mm-hmm. in conversation? Listen and don't have to have a response. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I don't, I don't yeah. know if we talked about this in our podcast, but I know that I mentioned, mentioned it somewhere, maybe my podcast or something, Japanese podcast. But I remember, I recall this one day, one moment, um, how I definitely realized that I was constantly, um, while I was listening, I was constantly thinking about what I would say next, you know? And that one day I just realized, oh, what if I didn't have to respond? You know, if I didn't have to uh, pressure myself or expect myself to, have to say something about it you know instead I can just say yeah you know I I hear you you know and just that question itself like oh what if I didn't have to respond you know not not to ignore what other people are saying it's Mm -hmm. just that no need to you know react Right, right 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 I remember just I don't know, like my nervous system, you know, I, I feel it's like, like a something opened up like a, a freedom, you know, I'm free to not have to respond. And it just felt this, you know, peacefulness. I remember that. Right. I don't have to always, re- you know, react, respond. I can just listen. Yeah, you know when you were talking about what was the, the musician's name you you were just referencing the interview. Ben, ben Monder. Yeah. yeah, Monder. Yeah, M O N D E R. Yeah. So when you were talking, you said he were trying to describe his way of speaking, and I was going to say maybe it's a, a, del, a deliberate or a t- intentional or. Yeah. Yeah, just like a, a focused. Mm-hmm. And I often think of, you know, my husband, you know, the, that expression of deep waters, but still waters run deep. So mm-hmm. he can sit still and listen. And if he doesn't, there's a way that he's processing, but it's very different processing. It's not a mental processing. It's a different process. Maybe it's a mental processing too, but it's it's like so slow. It doesn't. And it can be frustrating because, you know, we all need balance in our life, but mm-hmm. it can be frustrating. But when he comes up with something to say, it always touches people very deeply. Yeah. It's from a deep place, right? right? It's like a, it's an integration of something and it, it just rises, you know? Yeah. And he doesn't, he's never quick to speak. He's never quick to have to say something and sound smart or have a response. Or, I mean, he does the, the, the male female thing of having to problem solve when you're really just trying to get your emotions out, you know, <laughs> you don't want anybody to fix anything. Right. 
he does that but 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 in conversation he doesn't you know and I, I've always thought of that as a learning place for me and and what is that and it's so touching and I just love that depth that comes out from that place you know yeah that's wonderful I I like I see myself the other way around you know I'm kind of like yak 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 and when I when I'm with people like that I just so appreciate it's like mm-hmm. I want to do that <laughs> So sometimes you appreciate. I mean, I think there's different. There's a the, there's persons who still and they can talk really, really well. But then there's people who don't talk, and sometimes that can for me like that can be frustrating. You want to draw them in, but mm-hmm. that's an interesting thing too because you know I facilitated lots of groups over time. I've learned to account for people that are um, slow to to speak, mm-hmm. and. Um, because the people who are fast to speak will will uh, always keep speaking and yeah. often will not make room for that. What that slow to speak person needs to, or different paced person, even because it's not even compare them, just like a different pace. That pace requires silence. Mm-hmm. That pace requires invitation. Right. That pace requires uh, 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 questions. That that pace that's that person requires curiosity you know so those so it's sort of like all of these things need to be in the space as well so even the two two people the curiosity the the invitation the questions the the respect the understanding the love the um time and the silence Mm -hmm. To all those, it's sort of like music, right? It's like, mm-hmm. like you know, the old adage or or expression or about music that it's also in between. It's the silence that makes the music as much as the sound that yeah. makes the music, right? I mean, yeah. somebody somebody could be listening for all the silences, the pauses, the rest, mm-hmm. the invitations. Yeah, I I love especially that. in improv- improvisation. I would imagine, you know. Yeah, he was in that interview with Ben Maunder. He was talking about that, you know. Another suggestion, or well, he wasn't. I mean, he wasn't on the interview saying, "Hey, I want to suggest young musicians something." It was more like he was invited, right, to be interviewed. So there was this. Uh, interviewer saying you know suggestions to new musicians and he says it's you know it's good to not have to fill you know notes like fill every space with notes you know there's this you want to create space right you don't have to always fill in and you know, I think enough musicians do talk about that. He's not like the only person, of course, but when he was talking about that, as as I was listening, you know, my mind sort of went to not just music, but everything else, right? Like we have this need to fill with everything, to fill our days, you know, fill our talking, um, and it's interesting how I feel like I'm always drawn to, um, if it was people, you know, these people who, like Eckhart Tolle, right? He speaks very slowly. And then if you are listening to him in Audible or or his lecture or something, or I don't know if it's called lecture, it's called workshop or something, I, I remember I used to listen to him all the time on the on my phone and I'm doing dishes or other things. And then my son would come into the room and doing other stuff. And he goes, what happened? Why is he not talking? You know? And I said, no, he is talking. And to me, it wasn't a long yeah. you know, pause. But yeah. to my son, it was a a long enough pause that he thought that the the thing stopped. Yeah, yeah. And um, 
but it that slowness and then um, space really helps me to digest. Yeah. And I was talking with my friend some some years ago and said, oh, yeah, I read his book, but I can't stand listening to him because he's just so slow. You know, I don't have patience for yeah. it. And each person's different, I guess. But for me, I do crave for that type of tempo. Right. So I love slow music. Not that I don't like fast music, right, either, right, right. but I I tend to get drawn to music that has a lot of space. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you know. Mm -hmm. Um. But yeah, it's it's interesting how maybe it's because I struggle with not filling up with things. I'm drawn to that and then not filling I, up with what sorry uh, because i struggle with um not having to fill up space you know whether when i'm talking or my yeah. day or whatever yeah. maybe i crave for that you know yeah in, in people in yeah. different situations i crave for that moment of just serene sparse sparseness you know in things yeah yeah i wonder you know you're talking like what what i, I was thinking about the, the this idea that you know in even counseling like we were doing listening practice with each other i'm thinking of somebody i, I particularly listen with she has a tendency to kind of uh interrupt the flow of what i'm saying with something she may think is helpful but but it interrupts me and then i rush to say more quicker yeah 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 yeah. there's a little fear like i want to make sure my space doesn't get so there's a fear mm -hmm. in there of like i'm not going to be allowed the full space to speak when i need to be spoken or i need to speak and list be listened to i'm not sure which part is the equation yeah. is like this because it's both it's like you want to be listened to but you also want to speak right you mm -hmm. want the chance to express right mm -hmm. and you want that expression to be received mm -hmm. you want both so if someone cuts you off on the expression even though they were listening it's like it, it's an interesting tension and I wonder how much that plays for you because it plays for me, you know. Yeah, I, oh yeah. Example. Oh, especially like, you know, when I'm talking with you, I I know that you give me a lot of space to talk. Or if I'm if I'm with uh mom friends, yeah, you know, yeah. two of them and just we're just three of us. Right. I don't feel that way, but if we're in a, a little larger group or if there were you know, if it was a small group, but two people might be talking really fast and then won't give space, I, I do the same thing. I feel like I have to speak really fast um, to be able to say what I need to say. Right. But it's it's funny. I, I feel like I'm speaking really, really fast. But like one time something got recorded and I was still talking pretty slow. Um it's just kind of a relative yeah right? yeah 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 um, yeah yeah but yeah i definitely have those moments yeah there's definitely people who talk really fast and they're known for talking really fast yeah right? the, i don't I, you definitely not qualify as one of those <laughs> <laughs> yeah interesting yeah yeah and actually that brings to the audience piece you know there's two of us we can agree and we can respect the silence and then we're doing this podcast and you think uh, my thought is like oh I mean how long is the silence would be and how long would people endure that and it sort of goes back to what you were saying about musicians and how they have to cater to audiences by doing 10 20 second snippets because nobody's going to listen to a deeper piece let alone listen deeply you know what i mean like they they the length and the depth is missing right like right. people don't the attention span is like both for the length like how long they can last and then how deep they can go 
mm-hmm. right? So, yeah. so, so, or, or so I can say that for myself. I can go long, but I can't go deep easily. Yeah. But you know, it's relative. I can, I can claim that I can go deep compared to a lot of people. But I, I, I also feel like that's what's really missing in me. Yeah, you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. And and making that decision. There's also another component of that that that's a, a decision. It's like mm-hmm. or an intention. Like I'm gonna be here. This is my intention to go. Go slow to go deep, to be here, and bring myself back and mm-hmm. just take it. You know, even um before we started this, I was uh just thinking about you know how we sometimes do a little bit of a check in with each other before we start the podcast and I was listening to you and we time it right the timer went off and you continued for about I've had to go by my inner clock like seven eight more minutes and I didn't say anything and usually I would have maybe but I didn't because I was just curious about the natural flow of of whatever was needed for you to feel somewhat complete oh this is a long 10 minutes yeah (laughs) yeah but 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 it was interesting because it reminded me this relationship I had with um um these other conversations I had I told you that I had called a few relatives and I had was reaching out to them to talk to them but schedule an appointment but I didn't I just chose that moment and I made this call when I didn't feel like I had time Mm -hmm. but I made it I decided I didn't have an appointment. I just decided I have a flexible schedule. So, and I one in the conversation being an hour and 25 minutes and another ended up being half an hour. But both of those were also that, okay, I'm just going to let this happen. This is important, but it's sort of like something, another level of the listening, like mm-hmm. this is coming through me to do. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I, either I do it and listen to it and do it, or I don't, and and then put it on my list again, mm-hmm. and not do it for another three five years, you know. So I listen in that moment, and I feel like it was a calling to call and connect with all of these people. Uh, it was a you know a spiritual kind of. I don't mean like I was feeling all this stuff, but I was hearing something and I was honoring that. Mm-hmm. So. You know, just going back to just how do we choose to listen to? Mm -hmm. So how do we do it? What invites us? What creates the container? But how do we choose to do that too? Every Mm -hmm. moment, say the tea ceremony, why? How can every moment be a tea ceremony? Mm -hmm. You know, or or let's just make it even a ceremony, a sacred moment that we share with others. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my um, this acquaintance of mine, we were talking about. Um, she kind of showed me. Um, there's a some kind of a what do you call this method called brain spotting. Yeah, and yeah. like the, depending on where you're looking at, it accesses different parts of the brain, and it it's like a, I guess. I don't know, do you call it treatment or whatever? But uh, anyway, we were talking about how it's important to, like, after some kind of healing treatment, you know, you want to kind of ground yourself. And the rest of the day, you want to sort of be in your body and, you know, in the present moment, right? And she was talking about her favorite way is to wash her hands with soap and just feeling the feeling of the soap and, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, the water and all that. Just, just little things like that, that is bringing ourselves to this present moment, you know, using our body to really feel it and like that. I really like that because I I feel like that when I'm doing dishes, like I'm thinking about something, go, Ooh, can I enjoy this, you know, suds or the soap or just the feel of the plate? And uh, yeah, if we can more and more uh, do that, you know, because boy, you know, you can practice anytime, anywhere, right? 
right, 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 moment. right, right. And then, like you're saying, when you are deeply in the moment, there's so much that we can discover. Right, right, right. Things, you know, such beauty. And, and uh, uh, when I was talking to my friend, the guitarist friend who we collaborate with, you know, he's, I was telling him, yeah, you know, only two people gave me thumbs up on Facebook. And, and then he goes, yeah. And then even like last song we did, that was like him, me, and this uh, horn player. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And he, Todd was going to do a short intro. It was, it was a beautiful Brazilian tune. He was going to do a short intro so that I would start singing right away. And I'm, I'm kind of like, you know, that intro, guitar intro is so beautiful, but it's a minute long. And and then Todd got into um, trying to figure out the whole intro instead of just making it short. Mm -hmm. And he realized how beautiful it was. And so he decided to record the whole, you know, guitar part with the, that long intro. Right, right. And I was so happy because I just love that that intro, and um, so he was mentioning. I think a little more people responded, but uh, not, it wasn't that great of a response. And then so he was saying, "Yeah, it, you know, it's probably because it had it had a long guitar intro, yeah. and people are kind of thinking." When is the singing start? When is the singing? Yeah, 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 it's yeah. just the instrumental, you know. Yeah, and and it's like what you're saying. Um, how when we can dive into that moment, mm -hmm. you can find so much beauty, right, within that just solo guitar intro. All those amazing notes, you know, harmonizing each other, and. But you totally miss that if you don't, you know, decide to just to deeply listen to that moment, right? Yeah. So I'm I'm just kind of I don't know summarizing that it is like I mean it just feels like it's a practice and it's difficult, but the reward is. Hi. Yeah. 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 I think that's a, a kind of a, a good place to end in thinking about this is a practice. It's not a one thing, one up, one time thing. It's in a practice in 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 awareness. It's a it's a it's a practice. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. Definitely. So, so and I think, yeah, it is a good time to end yeah, here. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. We'll see you next time. Yes. Thank you.